energy harvesting is about getting energy from the ambient, converting it into electricity and using it to power something. And it's been around for years. I mean, we talked about the partisan lamp, which is a 1950s thing. You had an oil lamp, you stuck this thing on your oil lamp, the lamp lit your room and the heat from it ran that partisan battery. So you could do something like play a radio. And the radio is quite a heavy consumer of power back in those days. But it really hasn't gone very far. It hasn't gone very far because it's low-grade power. There's not a lot of it. Most things that were being used need a lot of power. That's changed. It's changed dramatically, particularly in consumer electronics, where the power demands of the devices are tiny. I mean, now you can get a watch where you've got a little coil, a little magnet, you give it a shake, it charges your watch. And of course, with growth like, of things like the Internet of Things and commercial sensors, all sorts of stuff, require battery power where it's really stupidly inconvenient to have a tiny battery. So you think about a smoke generator, for instance, where you can't go around a factory where you've got four or five hundred of these in the every ten years to change that battery. So it's got to a stage where power consumption is low, the inconvenience of adding batteries and then maintaining them is high, that the idea of scavenging energy to run these low power electronics has become extremely popular and is an area of great interest. And of course with our desire to reduce the amount of rubbish that we make and reduce the amount of power that we consume, it's also interesting for home use in lots of different ways, particularly with personal uh, electronics and wearable electronics, uh, sensors and smoke detectors and all that kind of stuff, internet of things on your fridge, become really important. But making an energy scavenger that can run something is surprisingly easy. All you really need is something you can scavenge the energy from, something to convert it into electrical energy and something to store it in for a bit until it gets used. Now there's something you can uh, scavenge from is going to be light heat vibration, mostly. What you use to do that can be very, very variable. What you use to convert it is almost always a full wave rectifier, which looks like this. We put the inputs here, we take the plus and minus out, and then we stick them in a capacitor. Now the capacitor is sized for the energy needs that you have, given what you're going to be producing at the same time. And that capacitor, which has a life cycle of something like a million cycles, so that's 227 years, will be able to store that energy and deliver it to the electronics you need. Now as I say, it's stupidly simple to make an energy scavenger. Well, here is a really simple setup actually. We've got a metal blade. The metal plate is attached to one of those circuits on the AC side and then the other metal plate is attached to the other side. I've attached one side of this metal plate. Let me just unattach that so you can see. There's the metal plate. There it's going to our little circuit. And here it's going to this drum. Now this drum is actually just an earth. It doesn't do anything at all. It just provides a sink of electrons and it's a false earth. Now I've got that one there. And we put a plastic sheet over there and a little metal plate on it there. Then what we've actually got is a capacitor that is earthed on one side. If I connect the other side of that capacitor and I connect that to the other AC side of our interesting little circuit, then we have here a capacitor. Now let me show you what happens when I vary that capacitance. And I vary the capacitance really just by either changing the area of the plate or moving the distance between the two will vary the capacitor. So if I take that and lift it up, I have in fact created a variable capacitor. So let's <laughs> I don't know if you're noticing it particularly, but the rate at which this increases goes up. The rate is actually proportional, more or less as far as I can gauge, to the rate at which I'm moving what that. I'm doing, what I'm doing that is I'm pumping electrons through the circuit that are getting trapped in this capacitor. So a variable capacitor is in fact an electron now, pump. Now when we're scavenging energy, electron pumps are fascinating things. And variable capacitors can be made from all kinds of things, as long as you can vary the capacitance. So if you have a rubber balloon and you play, cut one side uh, with a conductive paint, for example, and the other side with the same conductive paint, and change the shape of the dome just by blowing air into it, you will in fact have created a variable capacitor. 
and that can act as an electron pump as long as it's attached to Earth. It's pumping the electrons out. Now, I started this little circuit on here, actually, and um, it had nothing on it. Now, we've got about 0.9 of a volt, so there won't be that much energy on here. But there's an, a some capture of energy that is certainly... So there we go. Not only are energy harvesters easy to make, they're fun, and they actually have a real life application. And if you fancied looking into it, there's a huge range of things you can do. So who knows? You might even invent the next wonder product. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. And please do remember to like and subscribe.